You all remember The 100, right? The TV show that took the bury your gaze trope so far that an entire convention was made in response? Yeah, that show. Well, it kept going after that moment, which happened in season 3, and in fact, it had four more seasons. The seventh and final season only recently finished airing a couple months ago, and trust me, it was a wild ride watching them try to keep that show going for as long as they did. But it made me want to discuss a really interesting phenomenon in TV writing called Jumping the Shark. Jumping the Shark is essentially when a TV show reaches what should be the natural end point of its storyline, but it wants to keep going or has been greenlit for more seasons, so it does something completely far-fetched and out of the blue to generate viewer interest and also continue moving the plot forward. It originally began with an episode of Happy Days in the 70s when Fonzie literally jumps over a shark while on water skis, something which was unusual and gimmicky in comparison to what the show had been. At first, Jumping the Shark had the specific connotation of being just for similar types of comedic shows being more and more gimmicky to hold audience attention as they went on for season after season. But since then, it's been used for other types of media as well, and even to describe things like when a brand has a notable shift in its creative tone that people don't like as much. Jumping the shark is usually said with a negative connotation to point out that the show or franchise or whatever it may be is past its peak or that it had a specific moment when it abandoned its original intent. That being said, jumping the shark for a TV show doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Some people love a TV show that's unpredictable and changes wildly from season to season. And that's where the 100 comes in. This show doesn't just jump the shark once, but I swear like 46 different times. Okay, so realistically there's like three moments that stand out to me as particularly shark jumpy, but the show as a whole just manages to get more and more out there and disconnected from the original storyline with every season. I think also that if you've read the 100 book series, the TV show kind of feels like it jumps the shark in episode one, just because because of how wildly it diverges from the books. Which is fine, the TV show definitely doesn't have to mirror the books perfectly, and it's clearly done well as its own entity, but they are just not even remotely close to being the same story. When I first heard about Clark and Lexa before Lexa was killed in season 3, I went and read the 100 books first, expecting to read about their relationship. But uh, Lexa isn't even in the books. She's a character that was made for the TV show, along with like, most of the other characters. So obviously, a lot of people would have watched the show without reading the books and wouldn't have any sort of baseline idea for the story, which is completely fine. But if you have read the books first, even the first season of the 100 show is just like, wow, what in the world is even going on here? They blow through like an entire book's worth of content in maybe like half an episode. But then even ignoring the books, the show does have a kind of original storyline that it follows for the first couple of seasons. The 100 kids from the space station are down on a post-apocalyptic earth trying to survive while fighting each other and the grounders. Arguably, the first time it jumps the shark is at the end of season 2 with the introduction of an artificial intelligence named Allie. Up until then, the show was about survival in a post-apocalyptic world without much technology, but then all of a sudden there's a fancy mansion and an AI. It's a pretty big departure that I found surprising watching the show through at first. That doesn't mean it was a bad writing choice per se, just that it was a huge shift so that the show could go in a different direction. They'd obviously exhausted the original plotline. From there, there's like a whole storyline with this AI and this chip that embeds itself in someone's neck. The show does reach some sort of semblance of a normal progression through seasons 3 and 4, but it's the end of season 4 where things change drastically again, because there was only so far they could go with that storyline. Basically, a death wave passes over the planet, forcing some of the humans to hide in a bunker while others flee to space. We then fast forward 6 years to see Clark has somehow survived and now has a child? <laughs> I think I laughed out loud at that season finale when I first saw it. It was so weird to just skip so far forward in the show and give Clark a kid. Because again, they had exhausted the whole Alley plotline and just needed to do something different. But honestly, it's the third shark jumping that really gets me. That's really just next level, iconic, the 100 style. And that's when they continue all their fighting on Earth, blah blah blah. But then at the end of season 5, they just, they just nuke the whole planet and go into space. Like they really were like, Okay, not only have we exhausted this one specific storyline, but we've exhausted every possible storyline on this planet. So screw it, just nuke the planet, we'll go to a new one. I kind of love and hate this decision at the same time. Like, it's undeniably ridiculous, but it's also pretty fun to see how they continue to keep this show going. How many planets will they have to completely destroy before just moving on to the next one that also probably has some deep, morally gray crisis going on? When I was reading up on the old Wikipedia page for Jumping the Shark, I ran into a few other 
related phrases like nuking the fridge, marrying the Irving, and growing the beard. But honestly, I think we need a fourth entry to this list, and that would be nuking the planet. It's like jumping the shark on steroids. It's not a little gimmick to continue the show, it's just hitting a massive reset button and taking your entire cast into a brand new setting and destroying the old setting permanently. I'm sure other shows have done this in some shape or form, but this is definitely the most extreme example of it that I've seen. And if we keep renewing shows for countless seasons past their natural end point, we'll continue to see more shows nuking the planet. A solid antithesis to this is The Good Place. That was a show that ran exactly as long as it needed to, and had a beautiful and perfect and meaningful finale that fit within the original storyline. A lot of people were sad that it ended after four seasons, but extending the show beyond that would have ruined it. They would have had to jump the shark or nuke the planet and do something completely different to keep it going. But fortunately, that didn't happen and we got the ending of The Good Place as it should have been. I can't imagine what a fitting ending for the original storyline of The 100 would have been. I think it was kind of destined from the beginning to be this wacky, going on for too long kind of show. And maybe we need some shows like that where you stick around just to see how they can keep it going. But I think in general, letting a show run its course and end when it feels like it should end is the best path for most TV shows. Then the writers and showrunners and everyone can go work on another show and keep bringing us fresh new stories. But for The 100, the writers of the show obviously wanted to go in a very different direction from the books. They wanted it to be fast-paced and intense and unpredictable, and throwing in these massive change-ups to the storyline along the way helped them to do that. To some viewers, it may have been off-putting because The 100 Season 7 is unrecognizable to The 100 Season 1, or even like Season 4, but for other folks, that may have been the appeal. You're not ever coming back to the same thing because the show is always changing. That will work for some people and won't work for others. It was fascinating to see the 100 lean into jumping the shark fully as a tactic from the start, rather than as a gimmick at the end. Jumping the shark is usually a final act of desperation to keep a show going and keep it interesting. But the 100 flipped that and said, what if we do that from the get-go? I think the 100 jumped the shark so many times because they wanted to see if they could. They wanted to see what the reaction would be. They wanted to make a show unlike most other shows. In the end, they got seven seasons out of the show and potentially a prequel spinoff. So if that's how you define a show's success, then I guess jumping the shark over and over again worked out pretty well for them. It's not a perfect show by any means, and I'm absolutely still bitter about how they treated Lexa, but it was interesting to see how they managed to keep the story going for so many seasons. Do you know of any shows that have jumped the shark at a similar level to The 100? What do you think of The 100 now that it's done airing? Let me know in the comments. And if you liked this video, feel free to support me on Patreon and give this video a like. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.